Hey, now. All right. I'm back with Lady Gaga. We're celebrating the new album, uh, uh, Art Pop. Uh, Lady Gaga now at the piano. This is what... Let me kill this. Um, you uh, Did you pee? Let me see. Why is your mic not on? Because I didn't turn it on. Let me see now. Hello? Oh, now it is. Yeah, I yeah, was. You, <laughs> you peed? I did. I peed. It was... I, and I let out one of those, oh. It was <laughs> so good, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, let's see. Uh, there's a couple of questions from the audience. Ball says... Has Gaga ever met a hero that was a dick to her? Did you ever meet somebody you idolized? I mean, you never got to meet Michael Jackson, right? So no. that never happened. But was there someone that was really awful to you that you idolized and you were so excited to meet and then you were just so disappointed? Really awful? Yeah. Um, that's a very strong term. But yeah, I've been disappointed by meeting people before. Who was your disappointment? I'm not going to say. Come on, let me no, know. No, no, no. You could say it was me. It's all right. No, it was Howard care. Stern. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Rich suggests that you do an ub- unplugged LP, an unplugged album. That's not a bit. You know what? I like you just stripped down at the piano. I'm actually planning to. Rick Rubin and I did Dope together, the song I'm going to play. Right. And I loved working with him so, so much. And. He is just so wonderful, and we've uh, been talking about spending like a whole month together to make more of a... Why does everyone love Rick so much? Well, I know why I love Rick. Why do you love Rick? I love Rick because he just wants to hear me sing and play for hours and hours and hours. That'll make you love somebody. And he (laughs) just, he believes in my pure talent as a musician, and, and... That can be very challenging when you're working, you know, with, you know, producers that have been around for a long time or, you know, just anyone. They they think because I'm blonde and have tits in an ass that I'm not, you know, an artist. I'm not an artist. And I'm I'm like, well, you know, there's a lot like Stevie Nicks is a real artist and Janis Joplin is a real artist. Did you ever get to meet Stevie Nicks? Yeah. Yeah? She's She's everything. Not a disappointment. Great songwriter, right? Yes. Yes. And you had a long conversation with her, and she did not disappoint you. No. She was amazing. I mean, she's so much fun and so... So smart and sweet. And she advised you? Was she like a mentor? Did she say, uh, you know, hey, you need to write your own songs. You need to watch your publishing. You know, did she start to advise you about some of the mistakes she made? Uh, no. I mean, we didn't really talk about anything like that. We just had drinks and hung out. And Where do you do that? At her house? Uh, no, we were, we were, I don't remember. We were just at a, with Jimmy somewhere, Jimmy Ivy somewhere. Do you have any regular friends or are they mostly celebrities? No, I have tons of regular friends. You do? Yeah, I mean, I'm still friends with everybody that I w- was hanging out with on the Lower East Side before I was famous. When you're, si- but doesn't don't things change? Because before you were famous, they just treated you like a regular person. Now you walk in there, it's like a whole. It's all about you. Oh, trust me, they still treat me like a regular person. They do. <laughs> yeah. When you're warming up on a piano, right? Do, do you write 99 percent of your songs on the piano? Is that how you do it? No, what not you, always. Sometimes you just hear them in your head. Yeah, in my head, I'm working on, you know, working with beats and stuff. And, uh, like, you know, DJ White Shadow, when we made Art Pop, like, he would work on some grooves and then send me the grooves. And then I would start writing. And then when uh, I'll piece, I like to piece things together. A lot of Art Pop is about the groove changing and kind of taking you on a pop trip. It's hard to be on stage and just sit at a piano, right? Because people want a performance. They want to see you marching around and no, outfits. No, I love it. I feel in complete control. When you're on, on stage with a piano. Yes, because... I can just, you know, you know, with music, especially with music today, it's so mathematical and everything is like pop music is, you know, it's just so relentless, the beat. And, you know, when we were making art pop, we, I talked a lot about and we worked a lot on, on the dynamics of the electronic music. So the, the music on the album, even though it's electronic, it has dynamics and it has motion and it changes. It doesn't just have the same volume the whole way through. Or Because, you know, when you're Because electronic MIDI, music can get tedious sometimes. Very tedious. Yeah. And, and then, uh, you know, uh, when I'm at the piano, though, and even without a band... It's just me and the piano, and I can have just like a pure emotional experience. I can react to the fans. I can play so slower or faster. Would you ever like do right a concert now. where you just sit at the piano and just do like a stripped down kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, yeah, if I had time to prepare for it, sure. When you're sitting at the piano and you're just sort of uh, messing around, what songs do you play? Like I'm talking about of other, other artists, like you're warming up your voice or you're just sort of getting in the mood. What do you start playing over and over again? I don't actually. I I have like vocal warm ups. What do you do for vocal warm up? What is ha, that? Ha 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 ha! I do like vocal warm ups, and I've been with my teacher for 
over 10 years. I was just with, I was on the phone with him this morning before I came to see you. What, just to make sure that your voice was... Uh... Yeah, he warmed my voice up. Oh, I no do kidding. a vocal warm up before every performance. Oh, wow. That's dedication. And that's smart because you don't want to lose your voice. No, it, I mean, for me, the, the, the most awesome thing about the Born This Way ball, and even though it ended because of my hip, it's right. like my voice was great the whole time, even with the schedule and how tired I was. And it's mm-hmm. because I have, you know, great vocal training from working with him. And Your hip blowing out cost you about $25 million because you had to walk away from some tour dates, right? Uh, well, you know, it, it, I mean, there's insurance and stuff and I was really badly hurt, so it was fine. And, um, but you know, it was, it was very terrible. I didn't, I didn't want to not do those shows. I was so sad. I wanted to, you know, perform for my babies, my fans. I love them. I was so sad. The the little monsters. Yeah. My little monsters. Little monsters. They're so fucking loyal to you. I mean, like kill somebody if they, if you told them to, right? Well, you oh. know, I don't, I got to tell you, I don't like some of their behavior on the internet. And I, and I really don't like, I, and to be fair, they're not the only ones. This right. is like the culture of the internet now. And I, anyone of my fans that talks like that to anyone or to each other is not standing truly by me because what I stand for is love and acceptance and tolerance. And I made an entire record about it and I toured the world. So, um, with that message. And so, you know, I, I appreciate their loyalty and I love them very much. But just because somebody doesn't like me or says something mean about me, you don't have to defend me. You know, I'm, I'm fine. I, the thing is, you asked me earlier about, uh, like, provocation and shocking people and feeling like you have to outdo yourself. And it's interesting because, you know, it's not always fun to be the girl that everybody talks about in the morning after the show. Right. Because it's not always for the right reasons. And so even though that was how things were for me earlier, you know, I think what what's gotten me to where I am today is that I took all those punches and took all those blows and never made, you know, any apology for it because those things that I were doing were because there was a reason and a real meaning behind it. And when I see artists act a certain way and then kind of take it back a week later or start acting different like they you know they're not sure they should have done that this is like reactionary and you're making your work based on what other people think of you and i don't i don't feel the need to do that because i stand by the things that i've done and i you know you go to the grave with your work and you know i just um I really want my fans to just know that they don't have to defend me because I don't want to be defended because it's my choice to do the things that I do and I do them because I. I yeah, they seem they to take responsibility impact. for you. Like that's unbelievable. I, well, they really do. They, they know, they're protective. They, I think they really didn't like after you know after the whole controversy happened with Madonna a couple of years ago. Right. It was sort of like a door was opened for everyone to start taking shots at me, and so. I think that they just, they felt attacked and because it was a lot of press and a lot of people all the time, you know, they felt for you. Gaga's over, uh, you know, she's a copycat or she's, you know, ripping people off or she's, you know, she's not what everybody thinks she is. Do you ever make any of these fans your your personal friends? Do they ever become a true friend? I have. Yeah, I have. You have? A little monster has elevated themselves to close inner circle? Yeah. My friend Emma, she was actually with me last night at the Glamour Awards. Oh, she must be beside herself this emma well you know she's just a really great person and how'd she work that how'd what how'd she work that i mean how did she get in, inside your inner circle well you know i met her um on the born brave bus she was that's the bus that my mom uh, and i put together with the foundation the born this way foundation yeah and it traveled with the born this way ball in america And before every show, like a thousand kids would show up and they'd get free food and uh, they had access to youth counselors and they could find, you know, um, uh, know, shelters and uh, organizations in their community where they could go for, you know, just for mental help or anything. And I met Emma there and she's been in a wheelchair her whole life. And when I met her, uh, I wasn't feeling very well and and, uh, it was because of the, the hip and Uh, I just remember I was sitting with her, and she was like, are you okay? And I said, oh, yeah, you know, oh, yes, I'm fine. No, don't worry. She said, okay, because I'm sure you get tired, and I'm sure it's really hard for you to do all this, but just know that we really appreciate it. And and then I kind of softened up, and I said, well, you know, my body's just kind of sore from the tour. Hmm. 
And she said, oh, I understand all about body pain. You know, I'm in pain all the time from, from my, you know, what she grew up with, with her body and being in a wheelchair. And she has, she had hip dysplasia, mm-hmm. um, and cerebral palsy. So, uh, just this kind of complicated thing that she has to deal with all the time. And it makes it very uncomfortable for her, but she had such a joy, Howard, such a joy. And she had such a positive outlook on life. And she, but she became laughing. your friend and she became my friend because she spoke to me like a real person and not like a famous person. And she shared her story with me You and connected with her. I connected with her. And then I ended up that next city was when I saw the first doctor for my body and that's when I started to find out what was going wrong wrong with me. And then I reached out to her, and I um, I helped her to get a surgery uh, to help her be in less pain all the time. Oh, wow. Uh, so, but but it's really just because she became my friend, and you help your friends out, you know? Yeah. And she's just such a sweet girl. I mean, she she was with me last night at the Glamour Awards, and she was just, was just so cute. I mean, you could just tell how much it... It meant to her to see all these inspiring women speaking, and because she really mm-hmm. wants to be, um, she really wants to help people in her life, and like maybe do public speaking and uh, speak out about her disability. And she's just really sweet. And yeah, what's the song "Dope" about that you're going to perform? Oh uh, well, gosh, I started uh, "Dope." I wrote it originally. It was a song uh, that I wrote when the "Born This Way" ball was ending. And I was really sad. I was missing the fans, and it was it was called "I Want to Be with You," and it was all about not wanting to leave them. And you know, also, so are the fans like dope, like they're like a uh, dope a meaning a drug well, or dope. This this is where the song started, mm-hmm. and then I went back into the studio and I was finishing the album. And I, you know, the th- nice thing is that on tour you can sing whatever you want, you know. So I always plan to sing "I Want to Be with You" live, you know, for the fans. But I was working on the record, and the record label was like, oh, we really love the ballad, you know, the ballad, the ballad. And I'm like, you guys like the ballad because Lord's on the radio and because Adele was on the radio. <laughs> right. So they're looking so for another stop, one. So stop talking to me like this is it's because it's this song. Because, right. cause, you know, they they it's like they just they can't make up their mind. And it's like as they like whatever's selling. Exactly. And right. and I don't know that that's the best for my career in the long term. You know, it might be it might be a good idea for like a number one record. But, you know, I think it's OK to have a relationship with radio where they know that I'm always going to be pushing the boundaries a little bit. And, I, you know, we send them records for programming that are the ones that they like. And, right. and but I don't think there's a, a need to, you know, strategically plan how I'm writing my music or what we're giving to them to play based on what other people are doing. I mean, that's, like, not my thing at nah, all. No, because then you'd be boring and then you'd be just uh, derivative. So I, I had kind of a rebellious spirit about this because they liked the ballad. So I so said... that's why you wrote Dope? So I went in to write the record and I was like, oh, they want a fucking ballad. I'll give you a fucking ballad. I'll give you a real ballad about my soul and my heart and what really matters to me and what I really want to say. And it was really emotional. I went in there and I started writing and I thought, what do I really want to say? And I really wanted to say I'm sorry to my family, to my boyfriend, to my fans for getting so sad and so depressed by the industry and getting so sad and depressed by, you know, my hip breaking and, and being out of um So are you calling yourself a dope? No, I, I started doing... You know, a lot sure? of drugs, drugs because I I felt so lost and I felt I like I couldn't even find my soul anymore and because you know you get put in this machine and it's like a roller coaster your life and I really um, I was doing the dope to keep on the roller coaster and then I stopped the dope and I realized I just wanted to get off the roller coaster and just do what I want as an artist and so this it. is a song about dope. This is a song about dope. All right. I'm saying I'm sorry and I love you. All right, take it away and I'll sit here like a <laughs> like, like a, a dope. Like a big dope. <laughs> no, you're All right, not. go ahead. Yeah, all right. <laughs>